Hey everybody, Brett Etheridge here, founder of Dominate Test Prep and the industry's leading online GRE prep course. And in this video, I wanna talk about habits and specifically five key habits. I'm gonna give you five habits that if you implement them between now and test day will lead to huge results for you on the GRE. You know, they say that we are what we repeatedly do. And I think that's absolutely right. And it makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, what we regularly and repeatedly eat leads to whether or not we're overweight or trim and you know healthy. What we repeatedly read certainly influences how we think, what we know, how we view the world. And what we repeatedly do daily as we're studying for the GRE, preparing for the GRE, will either lead to success or failure on test day. And by the way, you might already have some bad habits that need to be broken and new habits that need to replace those. And I'm gonna give you those today. But first, you know, there's a lot going on on the board and I'm gonna kinda, it's all gonna make sense here in a second. I wanna start by actually talking about a framework for thinking about habits. And actually, you know, it comes from a book I'm reading right now, I'm almost done with it, called Atomic Habits by James Clear. Uh, if you haven't read this book, you should. I'll provide a link to it in, kind of below this video. Grab a copy if you're interested. I think what he teaches in terms of habits, where they come from, how you break bad ones, how you create good ones in any of the area of your life uh, will serve you well. I'm gonna talk about it obviously in the context for you of preparing for the GRE. And what he talks about is kind of flipping on its head how a lot of us think about habit creation, right? And, and kind of the way that we go about getting what we want in our lives. And a lot of us, and I certainly have been this way before, in fact, I've even kind of taught the quote unquote wrong way of thinking about this in business in the past. I've attended seminars where they kind of go at this backwards and what he's doing is he's flipping it on the head. A lot of us start with, our desired outcomes, right? If we think about kind of these three concentric circles, most of us, a lot of times, we work from the outside in, right? We think about that outcomes what, that we want in our lives. I want to uh, be skinnier, right? My goal is to lose 30 pounds. My goal on the GRE is to get a 160 on the quant, a 165 on the quant, a 320 combined score, a 300 combined score. Whatever your goal is, right? Our outcomes are our goals. We start with the goals and then we kind of work inwards from there, right? So these are outcome-based approach to kind of success and what we want. And there's nothing wrong with setting goals. It's okay to want a certain score because that's what the school you're applying to requires. But the problem with that is if we start with the outcomes, then when we work backwards, how do we know that the processes are gonna lead there? How do we know then, like we hope then, that our identity somehow derives from our success. It's putting the cart before the horse. If I can just get, you know, like a, a 160 quant on the GRE, a 165 quant on the GRE, then I will be, motivated, then I will be this type of person. I will be a successful grad student. I, but really, what he's saying is what we need to do, don't want my, my marker to dry out, so I'll go ahead and bend over and interrupt the video to put that back on. What he's saying is we actually need to start by figuring out who we are at the core, what our values are, what type of person do we want to become? I want to become motivated, disciplined, driven, successful in business, successful in uh, su successful in nursing. I want to be uh, I want to be the type of person that helps people. And, like, what are my core values, and then what processes stem from that? And if we do those, and by the way, these processes are the habits that we're gonna be talking about, right? So you need to do some work and figure out what your core values are as they pertain to uh, graduate school, business school, whatever you're taking the GRE for, really what you're wanting out of life, but why, like what's your why? And I have got some other videos and blog posts about that. Then what habits, and that's what I'm gonna teach you, derive from that, and if you just do those, the results will come. 
So you don't need to start by setting a target goal. What we need to do is get clear on the types of habits you should have, success habits, and the results will naturally follow from those. Does it make sense? So it might sound like a slight nuance, but that's what we're talking about here. So what are those five habits? That if we implement them, almost regardless of what your goal is, right, that score should naturally derive from these five things. So are you ready? What are the five success habits? And by the way, a few of these might seem obvious, but I'm gonna kind of flesh them out and give you some, some ideas around them. And a couple of them might be a little bit mm, outside the box, something you haven't really thought about, but I guarantee they're gonna to lead uh, to improve results for you. And the first, the first thing that you absolutely should create a habit around is reading. Read more on a daily basis. And specifically, you should read, increase the amount that you're reading 30 minutes every single day between now and test day. Maybe you're already a reader, great. You read every night before you go to bed. Increase it by 30 minutes. And specifically, start to read denser GRE graduate level stuff. Starting with real former GRE reading comprehension passages, but then think about the types of passages you see. And, and maybe you're new to the GRE and you haven't actually done much practice problems. The types of reading comprehension passages, and by the way, sentence completions will improve as your reading improves. Understanding how sentences flow, your vocabulary will go up the more you read, right? Lots, especially if you're a non-native English speaker, Read more, read more, read more between now and test day. Um, but you want to read the types of things that you're going to see. So I'm not talking about trash romance novels, right? I'm talking about um, journals, periodicals, scientific journals, maybe Scientific America, Foreign Affairs Magazine, National Geographic Magazine that contain things that are maybe outside the box a little bit, outside your comfort zone. Maybe you don't know a whole lot about history. Go read some history. Maybe you don't know a lot about science. Go read some archaeology textbooks uh, because those are the types of things that if you can get yourself to understand, comprehend stuff, then that will only translate well to test day. So read, read, read some more. And by the way, this is a habit that start now for the GRE but should extend the rest of your life, right? By definition, habits are things that you just do all the time. Readers are leaders, so hopefully this is a habit that you're going to be a reader for the rest of your life because that's kind of where the fun of life comes, isn't it? Learning new things and exposing yourself to new ideas. So anyway, read, read, read. Now the second one I think will be obvious as well, but let me flesh it out for you a little bit. Um, and that is that you need to obviously be learning and practicing GRE stuff every single day. The key here is consistency daily activity toward your goal on the GRE. The analogy I like to use is um, if you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to get in shape. Two, two people, person A goes to the gym every single day for 30 minutes, just 30 minutes, but every single day for the next three months. Person B only goes on Saturday. Now, but he goes for like three hours. He tries to cram all of his exercise into one day, all three hours. So he's working out longer, three hours, but who do you think is gonna get better results over the next 30, three months, 90 days? Obviously the person who goes every single day. Even if he's not doing quite as much, he's doing it every single day. And the results, your body, will improve, same thing here with the GRE, right? It's better to do at least something, a little bit of learning, a little bit of practicing every single day, rather than, I know we're busy, I know a lot of you are working the kind of the GRE into the nooks and crannies of your lives, you have families, you have uh, work, you have other hobbies and responsibilities, but guys, do at least a little, even if it's just 30 minutes a day, maybe an hour a day after work, and then you have longer sessions on the weekend, but consistent activity is key. Now. Here's what I want to say about it. I say learn and practice daily. Here's the mistake a lot of students make. And by the way, the best resource for you to learn and practice from, at least the practice part, is the official guide to the GRE. Unfortunately, um, there's not a lot of instruction in this book. And frankly, there's not a lot of good instruction in any textbook out there. I know there's lots of textbooks out there and some of it have, some of them have a little bit of theory in there. Um, but you need a resource to learn 
into practice. This is a great resource for practice problems because it's the only book from the makers of the GRE with real former GRE questions. But here's the mistake a lot of students make. They only practice. I actually got a call literally just yesterday from a guy who says, I need to pick your brain. I just retook the GRE. I still didn't get the score I need. I feel like I've been putting in the time. I feel like I've been putting in the hours. What's wrong? Like, can you help me? And we started to diagnose it a little bit. And what we realized is, is really all he's doing is just working practice problems. He says, I've just, I just do practice problems. Well, it'd be like if you go out and try to learn to play golf and all you do is play practice rounds. You go out and literally play holes. But Nobody's ever taught you how to actually hit a golf ball. Here's how you swing a club. Here's how you putt in a straight line. You've never had somebody watch you swing and figure out why every time you hit, your ball goes straight off to the right. You need somebody to help you, to teach you. You need to learn. And that comes from like a course like mine. I'm, you know, like I said, whether it's mine or somebody else or you hire a tutor, you need somebody to actually teach you the stuff and then practice. So you need to be doing both of these things on a daily basis. Watching videos like mine and my courses, um, watching you know, whatever. If you have a good theory book, great. Read the theory book, learn the stuff, and then practice it daily, which leads me, by the way, to my third habit. And, and this is... This is actually a habit that has to be learned and developed, and it's the habit of what I call taking pains. Let me talk about the reverse of this for a second. The bad habit that you may already have that you need to break and replace with the good habit of taking pains when you're doing your practice problems. Now here's what a lot of students do, and I'm, I'm guilty of this as well. I remember when I was studying for the GRE, I fell into this trap too, where I'd sit down to do a block of practice problems, and I'd open it up, and I'd start doing this problem, and literally it might have been right out of the gate, I look at the problem, and I just kind of feel stuck in the beginning. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. By the way, lots of strategies in my course to teach you how to move forward on certain types of questions immediately once you diagnose the type of question that it is. So you need to learn how to do each of these question types. But let's say you don't recognize a question type or partway through you're getting stuck and you just can't quite figure it out. What's the bad habit? The bad habit is to flip to the back of the book and read the explanation. Read the answer, try to figure out, okay, how do you do it? And some learning happens that way, to be sure. But here's why that's a bad habit. And the better habit is to instead take pains, take a little extra second, force yourself to learn and develop the habit of stick to wrestling with the question a little bit longer until you have the breakthrough and fi either figure out how to actually do it or teach yourself and train yourself to make educated guesses before you just throw in the towel, right? Why? Two reasons. One, you can't flip to the back of the book or look at the answer key on test day, can you? So why are you so eager to do it during your practice sessions? Now, you might not have learned everything yet, I get it, but at the end of the day, on test day, you're going to have to wrestle with it. You have to force yourself to come up with an answer. You might have to get creative. You might have to reason your way to a right answer. You might have to come with some non-traditional approaches to get a right answer. So you should be doing that during your practice sessions. And the second reason is because that's where the real learning comes. The best breakthroughs, the best mental breakthroughs come when you wrestle with it and figure it out yourself. Not reading a book's explanation, but digging into the reservoir of maybe videos that you've watched teaching you certain concepts. Maybe you go back to your notes before you just read the explanation. Hmm, if I could just remember the rules of 45, 45, 90 right triangles. Well, don't cheat by looking at the back of the book, go back to your notes, rewatch one of my videos, go figure it out, ah, boom, mental, oh, that, so that means the hypotenuse is this, that means that's also the radius of the circle, and, and then once you make those mental connections, that's permanent, that's called learning. That will stick so that on test day, man, you have now have had the breakthrough that'll help you get a right answer on test day. So lots of reasons to get in the habit of taking pains during your practice. Fourth success habit is um, you need to be taking at least one practice test every week. 
That's a good habit to get into, right? A practice test a week. Makes sense. Um, there are a couple reasons for this. Obviously, this is where you're implementing what you're learning. Practice tests are also where you hone your time management, and it's going to keep you sharp. Right? The mistake some of my students even make is, and I even assign practice tests you know, weekly in my course, and yet sometimes students will just kind of skip them in the first few weeks, or they'll literally say, eh, I want to make it through the course, I want to like learn the stuff before I take a practice test. I understand that thinking, but I also know it's super important that you're taking practice tests along the way because it gives you benchmarks to track your progress. It's how you help to build confidence as you see your score improving. It's how you develop your uh, time management. It's where you learn to take pains in the context of a timed situation where you can't, you can't like flip to the back of the book, so you have to force yourself to practice doing that as the clock is ticking away. It's where you learn to control your anxiety because now the time is ticking away and you feel a little bit of anxiety because this is like the real deal, right? Even though it's a practice test. Lots of reasons that you need to put yourself in a situation where you're taking practice tests on a weekly basis. Now, in terms of where to get some practice tests, there are two free practice tests on the ETS website, but I have up to six full-length GRE practice tests available on my website as well. There are other resources out there for you. Just get your hands on some practice tests because you want to take one weekly. Which brings me to the final habit. Now this one might sound a little bit out of the box, but I guarantee you it is just as important as the rest of these habits are and will lead to huge results on test day because it's it plays to the mindset that you need to carry in to test day. And that is, you need to develop a habit of expressing gratitude. Yeah, that's right, expressing gratitude on a daily basis. I start every single morning, right? The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I have a little bit of quiet time, I pray, and I express gratitude for the blessings in my life. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my family. I'm grateful that I have the, even if I have a stressful day, even if there's something I don't want to be doing, man, that I get the opportunity to do this. And for you to remind yourself on a daily basis that taking the GRE is a choice that you have made. Nobody's forcing you to do this. No, like I understand you can feel some anxiety and frustration, or, but at the end of the day, this is something that you are lucky to be doing. First of all, you've chosen to do it. And second of all, think about the larger context of the world. You're in the 1%, the top 1% of people who are educated enough and have the financial resources and means and time to devote to doing something like thinking about improving your life, taking the GRE, going to graduate school, get more an education to improve your life. This is an opportunity. And you should be grateful for that, right? So how many people would kill to have that opportunity? And so you need to express gratitude for that. And not just that, for everything. You'd be grateful for yesterday's practice test score that went up. Thank, be grateful for somebody who's uh, you know, teaching you some things. Maybe grateful for me for sharing these five habits. Every single day, find something that you're thankful for, that you're grateful for, and this will shift your whole attitude, your whole outlook, so that when you go on into test day, you've got the right frame of mind. And I guarantee you that will translate, not operating from a fear-based, woe is me, this is hard, the GRE is annoying mindset, but from a standpoint of, this is game day, this is what I've been working for, I'm so lucky I get to go to grad school, I can't wait to do well on the GRE to move forward, and that mindset will absolutely lead to right answers for you and, and a higher score on test day. So, uh, with that, the five success habits, be, do, have. By the way, I didn't talk about that, but the be, do, have is kind of a, a mantra that I use to remind myself to work from the inside out. That I, who do I want to be first and foremost? That will drive the actions that I do on a daily basis. And then I'll have the results that I want in my life from a success standpoint, from a happy marriage and relationship standpoint, from a health and fitness standpoint, from a success on the GRE standpoint. So be, do, have. From the do standpoint, implement these habits. 
and let me know how it goes. In fact, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. What of this was kind of like an aha for you? Which of these habits is maybe a new idea for you that you're excited to implement in your own preparation for the GRE? And if you have any habits that have been serving you well, as you've been preparing for the GRE or just life in general, please share them. I'd love to read them and I know other people in our community would benefit from hearing your thoughts as well. So please leave a comment, let me know, and go out, implement some of these habits so that you can dominate the GRE.